everybody, welcome to Opinia Yoga and I am Opinia. Today back to basics, let's do high lunge. I'm going to demo first and then we will talk. <laughs> no. Namaste everybody, welcome to Opinia Yoga and Today, today, back to basics, is high lunge. Let me show you the pose and I will come back and talk to you, okay? that can be varied and I will tell you what they are but we're gonna build the pose from the ground up for the legs one foot forward I'm gonna change sides okay this one foot forward this one is my left and the other foot is back both feet is point straight forward and I am going to find the width of my leg, which it may be that I can adjust this later. It may be deeper, it may be narrower, but it depends. Okay. Each exhale, I'm going to use that opportunity to go down, like go down into the floor by bending that front knee forward. At the same time, I want to kick my back leg. Think about kick the thighs up to the sky and make that leg straight. Also kick the heels away from me, thighs up, heels away. So do it, do two actions of this leg together at the same time. You see that? So you inhale, you don't need to do anything for the legs. You exhale, you bend the front knee forward, kick the back heels back, kick the thighs up to the sky. Go deep into that. The stretch you're going to feel is going to be actually towards the back leg is the hip flexors. Okay? It's run along the front. Actually, one of the hip flexors is go to the front of the quad, down to the knee. And as we also have several others and they connect it and they go here. So that's what you will feel it somewhere in there. Okay. The thing is, you can do high lunge and do just that and be happy with it. Okay, I'm going to do that again. We're going to do from the ground up, but you can't just stop right there, especially for us who are tight. Because for you to just get that back leg straight, it can be such a very um, tough thing to do because your heel flexors are so tight and you don't actually have to do anything else. Which is to me is important because I don't want you to get so caught up in doing your upper body and then you are not actually do the work of the leg. Which to me it should come first. Is you should focus on the work of the leg first. Get comfortable and used to that feeling of the stretch and how to even hold yourself upright and then you can come back and work on the upper body next time. Keep that in mind. I'm just going to do just the legs again for now. So hips square, right foot forward, quite straight, left foot back. If you start with the knees bent, true or no problem. But when you exhale, see you can bend the front knee, keep the back leg toes straight. And I want you to keep your eyes, especially the front leg, you can see it. Please do your best to not 
let the knees go beyond the angle. If that's happening, you can slide the back foot back and make the stand longer. So now, when you go deep, then your knees are protected. Yes. So your, your front knee is protected. Yes. So you inhale, you breathe. Exhale, you do two action of the leg at the same time. Front knee is bend, back leg, kick the heels back and the thighs up to the sky. You can go as deep as 90 degree angle on the front thighs. And exhale. Keep square and exhale. You can come out by step forward or you can just come down onto the knees. Just depend on how comfortable you are. Also, it's really important to be on four corners of the feet. I want to say four corners of the foot, especially the front. And I'm sure that the tendency is you will roll to the outside edge of it. So pay more attention to keep the big toe side edge of the front foot to the floor. Alright? I'm getting tired. <laughs> but it's a strong pose. It's a strong muscles to go against with it or with them. Now let's talk upper body. I normally use the inhalation to work the upper body. I'm not going to talk the exhalation and the legs anymore, but I will do the action. Okay? So, exhale. Then inhale. I draw the core in and toward myself. And what that also does is that it help me lengthen the tailbone toward the ground. Okay. And then I exhale. And I keep that. Next inhalation, I will length from there, the strength of my core, and lift everything from there, ribs, chest, the sternum, neck, up to the sky. Even my shoulder blades is kind of float up a bit. When I exhale, next time I draw the shoulder blades together, I'm facing up. Inhale, and I check, and can it start to repeat that? Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then change legs. Keep square. Exhale. Inhale, tailbone down, belly draw in, ribs together. Exhale. Then from the strength of the core, lift the spines up to the sky. Shoulder blades together. Exhale, next long. Inhale. Exhale. And for me, I have a tendency to go there very easily. I have to keep my focus and check this action quite often. Why? I don't want my hip to move forward like that. I don't want my um, like high lunges to look like this. Even though I straighten my leg and do my hip like this. No, I don't want that. I want my hip to go that way. But then I just rock the hip under enough, not too much forward, so I can lend my spine up to the sky. It's so much work. The thing is, when you length the second half, which means your upper body up to the sky, what happens is that, to me, I always see that now I stretch on the other end of the hamstrings, hamstrings, the other end of the hip flexor muscles, which make the stretch feel so much harder. When I add that in, it's like, oh, it's so much work. It, it does. <laughs> Especially when I keep doing it over and over again. But, you know, you will get um, a, a better stretch when your body is ready for that. So, since I say the whole thing, I want to kind of do a brief conclusion again before I continue. You can just work the only the bottom half at first if you're 
enough. Like if you're tight enough, that can be enough. Work until the back leg can become straight. Work until the front thigh can go 90 degree angle. Then you add the upper body. Like you can see when you go down there, you kick like one like one end of the hip flexor stretch. And then when you start to get the body to lift, the other end of your body is also stretched. But that's not only the hip flexor. What, the, what happened is you also lift up your ribs, you lift up your spine, you go against the gravity. And we also use that to do chest opening and shoulder blades together on the back. Neck is also participate, so it's so much weight to do. Yeah, you can do that for sure. Last thing that I want to put it in is the position of the arms. Personally, I don't have preference. But the classic high lunge is we go the arms up alongside the ears. This definitely is one. I'm gonna make sure you can see my hand. One way of doing it. However, personally, I feel like I actually can walk forward a bit. It will have no benefit at all for you to get the arms up alongside the ears and actually you feel hurt your shoulder more when your shoulders is rounded. Like when your spine is, is normally your spine will not lift neither from my experience that I see my student doing it you just like lunge and you hear and your spine is here and you round and you lift your arms and your hand is like here actually kind of is over the ears I always major my arms like that Please pay attention to really get the space of your heart, like your sternum and your chest, to be able to move forward. And you can see my shoulder blades is all already automatically move backward. Let these upper chests have this action first before you do anything with the arms, or Maybe actually one variation of the arms that will help you to get that is to do this. There. Or you can do there. Let's get the chest go forward. Shoulder this together. Now, when we get the chest to open so much, we need to make sure, especially for me, that the ribs are not fanning forward and, and you forget your core. You want your core to also in. Okay? I am going to put all the hand variation that I know of to show you the choices that you can use and I want you to pay attention on this part of my upper body like the chest and the shoulder blades and here this it will always like remain I don't want to say it's remain the same but I want to get that to happen no matter where my hand all right now I'm gonna put the whole post together with the variations of the arms okay so exhale down to the legs bone yeah. inhale up to the chest shoulder blades together you see where my hand is down to the leg root the tailbone down spine nice and long chin my hand now root the tailbone now spine nice and lengthen this in and you can curl now your chest to go up and back so much ribs is in the best you can back leg straight adjust and then come forward and down now if you go that deep this pose is will have another um, dimension into it is you create the back bend out from that that is when your hip flexor allow you now when your hip flexor stretch so much, um, the back bend will come um, gradually. Next size, I'm gonna change my hands again so you can see options. I can do it like this, see that? Pull the elbow back, chest forward, ribs in. I can do that. I can hook my thumb, bend the elbow, draw the armpit back, shoulder blades together, ribs in. And curl the spice up and back and make 
sure that my legs are in the right place. Or there, or you can just here. The curling of the spine up and back, it should come gradually. It should come from tailbone down, spine lengthen, chest forward, shoulder blades together, inhale. Exhale, go down the leg bone. Inhale, root again and curl your body up and back. And you can just stop. Maybe look more like this. Spine straight. And chest open. Okay. Back leg straight. Core engage, bend toward the front knee. Arm can be even wider. And then head pressing back a bit. So we don't want the chin to go forward. everybody. Now I need to eat. It takes so much energy out of me. Hopefully you get some tips, useful one for your practice. I know there are a lot of details. That's why the video is here. You can watch it at home. So you can reveal it. You can stop it. Think about it. Do what you can do. Come back, learn about it. Try it again. Okay. There are good details to keep your practice simply, effectively. And I see you next time, everybody. Please, if you like, click like for the video. And you're not just subscribed and you enjoy the tips and you want more, please, I will be grateful that you are joining me for a yoga, a pinya yoga. And also, if you don't mind to share this tip with your friends and your family and help them to also be healthy as well, I will be deeply, deeply grateful. Namaste, everybody.